Netanyahu is a master of saying things that will help him win elections, including when they fall to the right of his actual governing policies. Sometimes his governing policies seem a little bit more restrained. However, if he's going to build a coalition of the right, as looks likely given the electoral outcome, um, those parties are even, some of them are even more right wing than the previous parties. Uh, you know, the difference between the outgoing Jewish Home Party, which was split, the, uh, the party of our, for, our, our previous um, education minister and justice minister, seems a little bit more moderate in the in light of the party that seems to be in uh, in its place, which is uh, a, a union of right wing parties that is that includes you know Kahanis and people who are you know far right extremists in Israeli society, even more than that outgoing coalition partner. So even if Netanyahu himself would like to be more restrained than his campaign rhetoric, his new coalition partners, which we assume will be his coalition partners, may not allow it. He may have to go further to the right, does, especially does on that mean, those annexation promises. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. So do, are we going to see Israel essentially annexing those, uh, those Palestinian occupied territories? I would be cautious about uh, asking whether we are starting to see that, because I think on the ground what we already see are various forms of de facto annexation, not formally, not in terms of uh, you know, declaring it. But on the ground, what you see is that over the last number of years, Israeli settlements are growing and expanding through through the construction of neighborhoods and infrastructure, even without establishing brand new settlements. And that has been going on for a number of years to the point where we can talk about de facto annexation. So what the what the right wing parties are now saying is, let's formalize this. Let's put a name to it. Uh, and that was what was different about Netanyahu's statement just a few days ago. I do see increasing pressure to, you know, extend Israeli law more formally and make declarations about uh, annexation. It will probably begin in pieces, not the entire West Bank, but we might see bills that were um, hovering in the previous uh, Knesset, bills such as annexing one settlement like Ma'alea Dumim or Area C, mm. which is 60 percent of the West Bank. I wouldn't be surprised if we see those coming around in the next term. And what does it say about Israeli politics that even though Netanyahu faced corruption charges, he's able uh, to still look at the moment like he's going to come out on top? Well, one of the things it says is that many of Netanyahu's supporters and even people who may not have supported him just because they thought he had been around for too long, really believe that these corruption charges are either overblown, uh, exaggerated by, you know, a liberal leaning media for a political agenda or that they are, uh, you know, part of a, gen a more generalized political agenda that, you know, of people, of, of actors in Israeli society who somehow persecute Netanyahu more than anybody else, that all politicians are a little bit corrupt, but they made a big deal of Netanyahu uh, and these cases because they are somehow trying to take him down for political reasons, which shows a great lack of faith, not only in the media, but also in the Israeli law enforcement and justice system. Um, and civil society and, you know, the idea of electoral, of, of governing, of the integrity of government seems to be, have taken a second place to this attitude that, uh, that you know, Netanyahu's supporters need to fight back against mm -hmm. that, what they consider political pressure on him. And they don't really buy that these charges All are right. anything, you know, so out of the ordinary.